Hey, what's up everyone? It's Mike Stubb here with George Portugal and we have yet another Long Island retro gaming pickup to share with you today. And we have a doozy of a device <laughs> here today. Listen, we have not gone to like Giant World or anything. This thing didn't need a power mushroom or super mushroom, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> today we're going to talk about the PS2 tool. And no, that is not just a regular PS2 on steroids. That is actually a development, a development and debug kit for the original PS2 and I kind of think that this is where Sony really started getting the idea of like this is how big a PS5 should be. Yeah. They probably went back to their archives and go, you know what, we need to bring back something <laughs> that's the size of a refrigerator. But uh, we do have to thank um, Video Game Trading Post here on Long Island for lending this out to us to, to do this retro pickup for today. So thank you everyone out there, go visit their store, uh, great, group of, great group of folks over there. But George, uh, give yeah. me some insight on this thing. This is a it's a dev kit, it's a debug kit, it's a computer, right. it's a PS2, it's got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, so let me tell you a little bit more about this particular unit and, and how it works and what people did with it. So, so yeah, as Mike indicated, you know, the PS2 tool was used by development houses and it was kind of, I think, for the middle to late stage of Delent where you've got um, some release candidates and you're like getting close to being done with putting out a new game. And so what it is is a combination of a Linux workstation, it's a Pentium MMX, and, um, and you can see that right here, yeah, on this side here. And then it also has real PS2 hardware built into it. And so there, there are some caveats. So it, it does region-free gaming, so you can take a game from like Europe or Japan or the United States and put it in here and it will work. Um, it also doesn't have any checks for, for whether it's an actual disc or not, so you could burn a game to a CDR or a DVDR and put it in here and it's like, yeah, no problem, no issue. No issue, so uh, yeah. to run all that stuff for, for development houses, I guess so if they're, you know, they have a build of a game and they want to throw it on a DVDR they can, or a CDR, they can throw it in there to run the game. Yeah, so this let them rapidly go through edits and make changes and find bugs and squash them and then just see how they perform. And so, yeah, you've got the game running in real time, and then you've got the code running here on the Linux side. And so if there are errors or if there's anything kind of going on, uh, it'll show up here. I mean, unfortunately, with this particular game, you know, you'll see Mike is going through the menus right now, and it's not changing any anything on the screen. But depending on the game, um, it might. And um, so, so what else can I tell you about this thing? So one thing that is different, too, about it is it does not play original PlayStation game. So it's restricted to just PS2. So it is a little bit different in that sense. But but otherwise, you know, it has the, the USB ports that a PS2 has and all the peripherals, the memory cards will, will work on here as well. Um, and then, you know, we'll show you some images of the back of this thing too. But basically, the, it has a lot of ports on it. So on the back, it has a, um, it has a VGA connection. And so that VGA connection is for the computer. And then it has a second VGA, which is basically giving you RGB from the PlayStation 2 side of things. Uh, it also lets you connect up using standard PlayStation composite videos. That's how we have it connected up to this monitor here. Um, it also has an S video input. So, so again, it's got similarities and it's got some pretty big differences from a standard um, PS2. And then another big one, and it depends on the version that you got. Um, this particular version only lets you put in a standard PS2 uh, style keyboard, so it's you know pre USB. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have one of I, those, yeah, I, lovely old connectors. Yeah, so I had to dig up this ancient HP, you know, circa 1999, 2000 keyboard, but it works. Um, and um, and we'll go through the boot process and show you how this thing works and and what type of Linux it's running um, in in a, in a moment. So this unit, this PS2 tool, uh, was supposed to be essentially the precursor to a line of development hardware Sony dubbed Creative Workstations. Right. I gather it wasn't a line that really ever came to fruition, but this was supposed to be like the precursor and the beginner, the beginning, uh, the beginning of that. And like you said, you know, it's using these this these combination of these two processors. So it's really really a developmental. It's a development console and a dev kit, and this bad boy is not cheap. <laughs> it is not cheap. No, it is not. When this when this release and Sony was was selling this out to development houses, it cost nineteen thousand dollars in nineteen ninety nine when this was first released because the PlayStation eventually comes out in two thousand. So nineteen thousand dollars in two thousand money. I don't have the, the the calculator in front of me, but we're going to say it's quite a bit of money. That's some serious cash. Quite yeah. Quite a bit of money in, in two thousand twenty one dollars. So this was not a cheap unit. So if you were, I guess if you were developing PS2 stuff, it, you, you had to be a pretty serious player. If yeah. You be spending that much money. Yeah, you did. You have to be a bigger development house to yeah. afford one of these things. Um, 
And, um, I mean, you have to be pretty, you know, well off to get one of these things now, too. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but they're, they're not cheap. They're, they're not cheap. A lot of these, you know, when the development houses were done with them, they would just get returned to Sony, and Sony would do whatever, discard them or recycle them or what have you. So uh, only occasionally would these things survive and and become part of the collector's market. So I can I can tell you a little bit about where this one came from. Yeah. So, so this one came from a development house called um, IT, and it was uh, Incredible Technologies. And so it's a company that made a bunch of games in the like late PlayStation era, PlayStation 2 era, and I, they may still exist. It's something I'd actually have to do a little more homework on. Um, I don't believe they actually developed any PlayStation 2 games, but they did. They did buy two of these, at least, at least two of these, because uh, Video Game Training Post owns two of them. Um, <laughs> and and from what I understand, they got these from some kind of clearance sale in Texas, where IT had their had their offices. Um, these were both broken, so I managed to repair both of them. And you can actually go through some of my older Fix It Friday videos to see what I did to get these things out. running. Um, at, when I did that too, I managed to take the hard drive out and dump its contents. And it turned out like they were completely empty. Like I never found anything on here aside from just a blank hard drive and just the you know Red Hat Linux operating system. So I don't believe these were actually used to develop any games or even any prototypes. But still, it's an interesting piece of video gaming history. And um, it's something that we are going to have at the next Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. And it's something that we can have running like this so people can, can take a look at it and, uh, and enjoy it. Yeah, it's a really, really nice piece. You don't really get to see stuff like this as frequently as we'd like. It's a very cool looking, it, it's gigantic, but it does, it, it, it does have a presence to it. It's definitely a really nice thing to see in person. And since the PS2, I think, is the number one selling video game console of all time, yeah. it's really nice to see where, how, what, what units were used for development. It actually kind of looks like a PS2 on its side permanently in one of those blue stands that folks would use to stand their PS2 up back in yeah, the day. Does this thing right. also lay flat or? It really doesn't. I mean, yeah. this, this stand, you can take it off. So yeah. technically you can take it off, but um, it's it runs hot, this thing, because yeah. of what it's doing. So it has like, I mean, you can probably hear it even on camera. It's got a massive fan. It's constantly blasting out air. So I, I think it's really intended to stay vertical, vertical like this. And if I owned one of these, I wouldn't mess with it. I'd no, kind of just no, leave it, leave it, it like this, even though it's really not exactly ideal to put in a shelving unit because, it, I mean, you'll, you put it next to your PS5, <laughs> which you also can't find a space for on your no, shelving unit. No, it's very difficult, <laughs> especially if you need space for it to vent. All right, so it's just about done with booting up the Linux portion of the PS2 tool. And when it does that, it shows this image here on the CRT. So this is the PS2 side of things. This is the computer side of things. And so you can see that it has all the information here so that if you want to log in and network with the PS2 tool, then you can have remote access to it that way. So ideally in a you know dev situation, you'd have it connected via ethernet. You'd use this information. And this is the original info from, from this uh, system here. Um, and you'd, it would work. You'd connect up to it. So in order to log into it, what you've got to do is uh, you type in root as your login. And then for password, it's administ. And now we're inside of uh, the, the PS2 tool. So from here, to run a game, what we're going to do is we're just going to type in a few commands. So cd backslash user local. SCE bin. And then from here, we're going to do dot slash BSE DBR. This resets the console side of things and it gets it ready to do, um, you know, a playthrough of a game. So we've got Gran Turismo 4 in here, so that's ready to go. And so now if I type reset to 100. It should play the game. There yep, go. and Big. there we go. And you see, it's running the, it's running Tekken this time. So, as the game plays, we will see things change here on the Linux side. I, lo I love this. I'm a, I'm a big PS2 fan. Yeah. I think the PS2 is a really great console. Um, and to see like this piece of history, it's it's important, right? It's yeah. important to see like things like this. It's important to know where they came from, and what they did, so that we get a better idea of how video game development worked. Right. Because yeah, this is this is a real piece of how video games were made. Yeah. And and could still be made. Like if one was knowledgeable about Linux, you could take 
you can take a PlayStation binary and modify it and run, you know, different changes to the code, see if it improves it, worsens it, what have you. And I mean, I don't know how to do that, but still, it's, it's something that people could do. All right, guys. Well, yeah, thanks again for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon with some more LI Retro pickups. Yes, continue to check out the YouTube channel, subscribe, like, do all that stuff to make this more visible, and thank you so much for watching. George, you're awesome. Thank you so much for bringing this in. Thanks, man.